Uh, here's a kind of a tip that you might not know about in Final Cut Pro 10, and it's working with text. Let's see, it's a little hard to explain. Uh, what I've got here is two examples of titles. This one is the slide title. Not sure where that actually comes in. I think it was in... Um, yeah, I think it was in here. Right here. Uh, one of the bulletin board titles. And I've got one that's just a simple, over-the-screen, uh, right-aligned, lower third. I'm going to start with this one first because it's the most simple. I, everybody knows by now that in order to change this, all you have to do is double click right on the viewer and edit it. I'm in trouble here. Hang on. Just do this. Okay. And that's pretty cool. You can also change parts of the text by selecting whatever part you want to edit, going to the text panel, and adjusting the controls that you have here. So you could change the color, opacity, you know, stuff like that, the outline. You can do a glow and a drop shadow and all this wonderful stuff. So you can, can individually control every character in this text in Final Cut Pro 10. But what you might not know is you're not restricted to this layout. Okay, uh, if you notice down here, this is, in motion, this would be considered just a regular text, text entry. But it, on the baseline here, uh, there's going to be a little control, a little circular control, and you can place this anywhere on the screen that you want to. So you're not restricted to using this as a lower third. You can use this as any other kind of title by dragging this around. So this is the an example of the straight text. And if you need help with placement, you can always go and show title and action safe. So you can align this properly if you want. The other kind of text that you can create if you have motion. In motion, these two items here are paragraph format. And you can tell when you double click on one or click on one, you get a ruler and a bounding box and these little control handles here so that you can control their placement by redesigning where the text on in these boxes appears. Now for uh, alignment on the right and left, you have to actually drag the margins out. Come on, come on, you can do this. And I'll have to go smaller here. And I'll drag this margin over. If I can actually select it. Come on. I know you're in there somewhere. Right there. All right. So you can redesign this uh, title in real time on the screen any way you like. Let's well, see how this runs. There's actually an animation on the size of these texts. And yeah, there you see the animation. Okay. And the animation of the bounding boxes in these actually controls the size of the text. So if I were to make this smaller, the size of the word automatically changes. Anyway, that's the tip. You are not restricted in any way of where text appears on the screen. You have controls on the screen to move it all around 
if you need to make more room for these um, in motion, if you set this up, uh, you can control how the text responds to the bounding box. Uh, you can have it resize itself uh, to fit inside the bounding box, which is really kind of cool, especially if you're designing a lower third that needs more than maybe one or two lines. And you don't want anybody to go over uh, the design in the background. Let's see if I can find one real quick. Lower thirds. This one. <laughs> okay. And you have, uh, say you need more room here. You can design this in motion so that the text will automatically change size and will not go over the bounding box here like this one will. Let's see if I can select. That's the description. I need a name. I can move it up on this. About to there. And then bring the description back up. So if I needed to squeeze an extra line on the lower third, I could manage that even without going into motion and redesigning this to uh, resize that. And if you wanted to do that, you would just go and select the description, go into the inspector, go to the text tab, go to layout, and under paragraph, you see this auto shrink selection, you can go down and to all margins and the text will automatically resize itself. So if I had something like an extra line I wanted to put in, you see that the text automatically resizes to fit the space that it's allocated. And then you would probably want to allow for as much room for this as possible because really small text on a screen is not easy to read. And I would Now this one's already set up for, no it's not. Uh, that little action created a stretch. What you need to do is select the text so that you get the ruler and the bounding box with the control handles. And so uh, that would reposition the text. If you get the blue dots, it's gonna resize. So let's see if I can get back to that. Right here, if I drag on a blue dot, you see that it's going to stretch and distort the text. So anyway, a couple of quick text tips for motion and final cut. If you don't have motion, you should have it because you can fix a lot of these little details. Uh, that gives you a lot more power in final cut. And if you don't have motion, you can still deal with things in a very motion-like way on the screen, in the viewer in real time and just design things like you want them to be. You are not restricted to what was given to you as far as text is concerned. Now, I hope this helps. I'll catch you on the next one.